Welcome back to How to Cake It, I'm Yolanda. This week I'm making the cake version of my favorite app icons as well as an emoji version of myself. You guys can help me get to 3 million subscribers by subscribing to my YouTube channel and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when I have a freshly baked video. I'm gonna start with the YouTube app for obvious reasons, we're here right now. To make my YouTube app, I baked a six inch square chocolate cake. I removed it from its pen, leveled it, and then I just trimmed and rounded each edge, you know, like the app. Once I had the shape down, I cut my cake in half, filled it with Italian meringue buttercream, and then crumb coated and chilled. What about, did you say you simple syrup them? No. <gasps> oh God. Yolanda. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, Sir Squeeze. Now I cut my cake into two layers and simple syruped both of those layers with the help of Sir Squeeze a lot. Do I have to dance three times in this video? Yes. Dance number one. Action. <laughs> this is the dance you should never do because it means you don't know how to dance. Uh, uh. Now that my crumb coat is set, I'm gonna ice this cake one more time and put it back in the fridge to chill again. Time to cover this cake with white fondant. I roll out my fondant an eighth of an inch thin, drape it over the cake, smooth it all around with a fondant smoother, and then trim away the excess at the base of the cake. For all of the recipes you need to make this cake, as well as a tutorial with some great fondant tips and techniques, there's a playlist with some great videos right over here. I'm going to create a template for myself by printing out the YouTube logo and cutting it out with an X-Acto knife. I roll out some red fondant, nice and thin, as thin as I could get it, and then I laid my template on top and with a sharp paring knife, cut around the outside and then to cut out the play button in the center. Thank you. Oh, Sir Squeeze is going to be jealous. I should have done that. I should not have done that. It's in his oh, contract, yo. Oh, no other models get screen time. I know. I know. Now I need to pick up my logo really gently, and in order to glue it to the surface of my cake, I'm just gonna brush on a little bit of water and place it in the center. This YouTube app is perfect for somebody who's learning cake decorating and wants to make a simple fondant cake. If only making YouTube videos was that easy. I would. <sighs> Next app that I'm making is Instagram. Shout out to my Instagram family. If you follow me on Instagram, please leave a comment below. And if you don't, here's my handle. Somewhere in this yeah. vicinity. Yeah. I made my Instagram app cake in the same fashion as the YouTube cake, rounded edges, simple syrup, and filled with Italian meringue buttercream. Then crumb coat and chill. Ooh, nice one. After my crumb coat was set, I iced it, chilled it, and now it's time for fondant. This cake is also an excellent cake, but it's more of a level two cake because you're gonna see when we move on to the decorating, it's a little bit trickier. The Instagram logo is tricky. It's like a watercolor rainbow, sort of. Let's just say under my nails was a rainbow. <laughs> So I made a few different colors, pink, purple, blue. After my colors were mixed, I painted them onto my Instagram cake in sort of like a diagonal rainbow fashion. And then I decided to blend the colors together using makeup sponges. It's like a makeup tutorial on a cake. And so just getting the right hues and the right tone and all the blending, it seems simple, but it takes a long time. So just be patient, have fun with it, Perhaps wear gloves <laughs> if you're going to a party or something after. <laughs> oh, 
Once you're happy with your paint technique, you want to set the cake aside to dry and then we can move on to rolling out some white fondant nice and thin so we can cut out the logo. I love using templates whenever possible. It really helps to keep your work nice and clean and it's a really simple thing to do. I use them on my emoji cakes. You can see those cakes in my characters playlist. Oh, I like that. I got it, right? This time I got it spot on. It's pretty close. For the inner circle of the Instagram logo and the little dot, I used circle cutters and a piping tip that were the exact right size that I needed. Once I have all three pieces that I need to make up the Instagram logo, I gently lay them on top of my cake. I still have the cake. I still have it because it took so long to paint. I don't know why I can't hang it on the wall or anything. <laughs> That would be interesting though. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's time for Fan Love Feb. The final week, yo! <gasps> fan Love March doesn't... <laughs> doesn't have the same it's ring. Like the ring. <laughs> this week, we're giving love to Reluca, Gustav, and Mary Soleil, who've created amazing How to Cake It inspired art and media. And a huge shout out to Amanda McBroom, Miguel's Kitchen, Nicole Luca, Olivia Hart, Madison Wood, and Hannah Peterson, I loved all of your comments this much. <laughs> now make sure you watch until the end of this video because I still have to do a Fan Love Feb giveaway to one lucky person. Do I get to throw more confetti then? We'll have to clean this one up. <sighs> okay, never mind. <laughs> now, I wish you could see me crossing my legs. <laughs> On to the Yolanda emoji or Yolemoji as some people call it. People. I mean me. Okay. <laughs> to make this cake, I have two 8 inch square chocolate cakes, which I remove from their pans and level. Once again, I made a template for myself by blowing up an emoji. She doesn't look like me yet, but she will. I used this template and laid it on top of both my cakes and started to cut out the shape of the emoji. I find it easy sometimes to bake two cakes and as I start to cut out the shape, I can move the excess cake accordingly and fill in all the spaces. The emoji is kind of a weird shape. Once I was happy with the emoji shape that I carved, I cut this cake in half creating two layers, simple syruped them and filled them with Italian meringue buttercream. I think Sir Squeezelot deserves his own emoji as well. That's a great point actually. Apple. <laughs> You know what time it is. It's crumb coat and chill time. Oh, you're ready this with me. the third This hand. is my emoji. I wish I could do the running man, but I'm not standing. A cake like this is a little harder to crumb coat and chill. Just make sure to take your time, use a small spatula, and get in between all of the angles and crevices. Like, really crumb coat my fingers well. That's all I'm saying. Now I know emojis are not three dimensional, but I wanted my emoji to come to life. So I made use of my two eight inch cake humps and created an oval of cake to crumb coat and chill on its own separately that I will later add to bulk up my face. As I said that, I realized I didn't want to say that. Once I crumb coated and chilled my body and my bulky face, I iced them once again and chilled them. I'm going to cover this cake in fondant in stages. So I begin with my flesh color fondant covering my hand and my bulky face separately. <laughs> Gotta cover that bulky face. Then I cover the top of my head where my hair will go with brown chocolate fondant. And then I cover the main part of the body and my arm with purple fondant. I feel that I did my emoji self a disservice by not putting her in a cake tea. I guess she's not a member of the cake tea club yet. I should have told her. But if you want to be a part of the cake tea club, you can head to howtokickit.com and sign up and you'll get access to cake teas that nobody else does. Like this one. 
Now I'm gonna make all the details for my emoji self. I'm going to rely on my template for the most part, except for my nose and my lips, which I'm gonna customize for the Yolanda emoji. I use my small fondant rolling pin to roll out white fondant, brown fondant, black fondant, a little bit of red fondant for my lips, and some more flesh colored fondant, um, just to, I was gonna say bulk again, to bulk up my hand and to cut out a nose and a neck. It's time to assemble my eyes. So onto the eyeballs, I add irises, pupil, catch light, thank you Jeremy. And I also cut out some eyebrows for my brown fondant. And then I did roll out some more brown fondant just to add a hairline to the top of my bulky face. <laughs> don't worry, I know I don't have bangs. You'll see why this makes sense. So your face is still bare at this point. Yes, I'm okay. faceless. I have a faceless, <laughs> bulky face, but I have a side part. And that's what matters. I'm going to glue my eyes and eyebrows onto my bulky face with just a little bit of water brushed onto the surface of my face. And I set them in the right place using my template to help. And I used a sculpting tool to add a line to define my upper and bottom lip. Although the emoji girl has a perfect little round button nose, who am I kidding? I used an oval cutter for my nose and I cut it out with the smallest oval shape. I cut out a band of purple for the collar of my non-cake t-shirt and another band that is like sort of the wristband of the sweater. I also want to take this time to cut out my hand out of flesh fondant just so that I can use a sculpting tool to really indent the fingers. I need defined fingers. How would I make cakes like this? <laughs> Although there is a ton of emojis to choose from, there is not one curly haired emoji. How is that possible? So to make my hair, I softened a whole bunch of brown chocolate fondant and began to run it through my clay extruder. I chose the face plate for the clay extruder that has several holes. It's usually used to make hair or grass or things of that nature. And I just kept extruding. <laughs> It was hours oh. of extruding. We, this could be how to extrude it. Like three Jeremy hours. helped me extrude. <laughs> and then I used wooden cake dowels as my curling iron. <laughs> so I took each cord of or tube of fondant and wrapped it around a dowel and let it set. <laughs> so a carfillion hours later, we had extruded enough um, brown fondant tubes to begin to apply to the cake as my hair. To apply my curls, I did brush on some clear piping gel. I needed something a little stronger. And I just began building out this hair. Um, the reason I covered the base of my cake and made my hairline with brown fondant is so that if we see through the curls, we didn't see other colors or like bald spots. <laughs> Cause I don't need a bald spot on my bulky face. <laughs> My emoji is almost complete. My clay extruder has left for a long vacation. Um, hiatus, really. And it's time to add my hand onto my emoji. The reason I didn't add it before is because she looks like when she raises her hand, it's like in front of her hair. You know what I mean? So I just laid that hand over the base hand <laughs> and I was complete. Apple, feel free to use my design. You're welcome. It's my pleasure, really. Please help my bulky face get to 3 million subscribers. <laughs> Subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so that you know when a new video comes out. And curly haired girls, please unite and let's get ourselves a curly haired emoji. A real one. We deserve it. Don't forget guys, it's also Pancake Tuesday. Who loves pancakes? Me! Who has a pancake cake video? Me! 
It's right over here. I should have made my emoji doing this. That's true. Last but not least, it's time to give away our exclusive Fan Love Feb bundle filled with your very own Sir Squeeze, Valentine scented pens, mini cards, one of your favorite cake teas, and a love letter from me. And the winner is Kate McPherson. Ooh, hold on, okay. Kate, hold on. <laughs> nice one. I thought that was well done. Well done.